Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Imam Ibn Rajab rahimahullah ta'ala he said and he has a good example in those who refuted the opinion of Sa'id Ibn al-Musayyib rahimahullah ta'ala concerning his allowing the woman that was divorced three times to remarry her first husband with just the marriage contract and his other opinions that contradicted the established sunnah and there are the scholars who refuted Al-Hasan al-Basri with regards to his opinion that a wife should not mourn for her deceased husband and who refuted Atta for his weak opinions and Tawus in the numerous issues in which he differed from the scholars as well as those other scholars whom the Muslims have agreed upon their guidance, knowledge and respect and reverence. So what does this show, Ahabit Tafillah? This shows that even the Salaf, that Imams of the Salaf were not free from mistakes and not free from ijtihad. And as the Prophet وسلم, said, we have to always, we, this is a qa'idah, this is a rule. Kullu ibn Adam khata wa khayran khata'ayina tawabun. All the children of Adam make mistakes. And the best of those who make those sins are those who repent. So know for sure that none of us are free from error. All of us uh, make mistakes. And all of us can be refuted. That doesn't make everyone a mubtadi'ah though. There is a difference. Then someone who's a soul, their foundation and understand the religion goes against the methodology and the usul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah versus the one whose usul is generally intact, but they make a mistake in some, uh, maybe a, a mas'ala and it wasn't based upon their desires. And this is what the uh, ulama say about great imams like Ibn Hajar al Asqalani and Imam al Nawawi and Imam Ibn Hazm and other great ahimma to sunnah that served Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen but they had, some of them had some issues which were, uh, had some ta'wil like the asha'ira with regards to al-asma'i wa sifat that they made mistakes in there and what makes them unique is because they, they assisted the sunnah and they were imams of the sunnah and no, no one declared them mubtadi'ah, and they didn't do those things out of their desires. That is very key. It's different between someone who continues in their mistake based upon their desires versus someone who falls into error, and then they die. They fall into even a bid'ah, but they die, but they were known for the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, and no one speaks about them as a mubtadi'ah, but yet they say, so-and-so made a mistake in this error in this issue, and we don't follow them in that. And I hope that's clear, bi'idnillah. Then the imam said, and not one of the scholars consider those that didn't agree with him in these issues, and their likes to be belittling or defaming these imams. The books of the Muslim scholars from past and present, such as the books of uh, Ash-Shafi'i, Ishaq, uh, Abu Ubaid, Abu Thawr, and those scholars of hadith and fiqh that came after them are filled with the clarifications of these opinions. If we were to mention that in words, this uh, discussion would be severely prolonged, letting us know that, as we mentioned, yes, imams of the Salaf made mistakes. Get that into your understanding of Islam. That no one, just because he's an imam of the Salaf, doesn't mean he didn't fall into a mistake in such and such issue. Even the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een were not free from mistakes in ijtihad, but they were still rewarded. And they were the best. And they were those who we do not speak about. They're ill. But this is to illustrate for us, as the imam illustrated for us, and as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and many imams use those examples of ijtihadat of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, which uh, were ijtihadat that were maybe not acceptable ijtihad that they did in accordance with what their knowledge of the sunnah was in that issue or what balagahum min sunnah what they received from the sunnah uh, and did their best and they were rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we believe this is our aqidah aqidah to ahl sunnah that they were rewarded for their ijtihad if they were mistaken as the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in a hadith then the shaykh said but if the intention of the one refuting is to expose the faults of the one being refuted and to debase him and manifest his ignorance and shortness of knowledge, then this is forbidden. Whether the refutation is done in the presence of the one being refuted or in his absence, or whether it's done during that person's lifetime or after his death, that's imperative. This is what Imam Ibn Rajab said. But why can't we begin to 
implement these principles instead of belittling and attacking, calling each other idiots and this one's a fool and this one's this. Alatu, without any advice, and without any mercy, without any rain, uh, lean, warif, you know, gentleness and, and kindness towards our brothers from Ahl Sunnah. Why is it that we quickly make tibdi and tafsiq and takfir of one another? Wallahu musta'an. This type of action falls under the acts which Allah condemns in his book and which he threatens the one who does it concerning his slander and backbiting. It also falls into the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ya Ma'ashir Ya Ma'ashir Men Men Amin uh, Bilisanihi The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O oh, you group of people that believe with your tongues while not with your hearts, do not abuse the Muslims nor seek after their faults for indeed, he who seeks after their faults, Allah will seek after his faults. And whosoever has Allah seek after his faults, he will expose them, even if they, even if he may have committed them in the privacy of his own home. That is a powerful hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, reported by Abu Ya'la in his Musnad, and Abu Na'im in uh, the La'il, uh, on the authority of Al-Bara' uh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Al-Haythami rahimahullah ta'ala said in Al-Majamma' Abu Layla reported it and its narrators are all reliable. So it's imperative, ahabitifillah, that if we want our own faults to be covered by Allah Azza wa Jal, then we shouldn't expose the faults of others. That doesn't mean we don't refute mistakes. That doesn't mean we don't refute Ahl Bid'ah. That don't mean, doesn't mean we don't refute one another from Ahl Sunnah. But we do it with respect. We do it with ihtiram. And if they do these mistakes silently, a, a meaning behind closed doors, not in public, not on the mimbar, not out in the open on YouTube, and so if millions of people hear their mistakes and during their lectures, then we should cover their mistakes and advise them. And of course, refute it. In general, it should be refuted. That it's a mistake and we don't want it to be spread. And the way we can refute it is by advising that individual that it was wrong. All of this uh, talk is with respect to the scholars that are followed in the religion. As for the people of innovation and misguidance and those who imitate the scholars but are not from them, then it is permissible to expose their ignorance and manifest their deficiencies in order to warn against following them. This is the kalam of Ibn Rajib, rahimahullah ta'ala. That's a powerful statement and that shows us those qa'id we've been talking about for so long in our, in our durus, which come from our ulama and Shaykh Ubaid al-Jabri, hafizahullah ta'ala, has mentioned this many times like in his explanation of Shara Sunnah and so forth, uh, giving you the principles from Ahl Sunnah that we maintain the respect of the Imam from Ahl Sunnah, the Talib al Alm from Ahl Sunnah, the brother or sister from Ahl Sunnah who made the mistake. Maintain respect for them. But at the same time, we refute their mistake and showing respect. But the person of Ahl Bid'ah. La karama lahu. Then he, this person, because of his usul, you khalif kitab wa sunnah. Then this person, it is not necessary to maintain his respect. Doesn't mean you lie. Doesn't mean you cheat. Doesn't mean you're deceptive. Doesn't mean your 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 intention changes. Your intention is to please Allah and to warn the Muslims against the mistakes and the severity of following the mistakes of Ahl Bidah. And then the Imam said, however, our discussion now is not concerning this topic, and Allah knows best. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. The next portion of the treaties will cover uh, the forms, the different ways to advise. Uh,